Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com, and today let's paint a spatula. So when I paint this spatula study, I'm gonna follow a very basic three steps. First, shape, then form, then detail. So the first part, which is shape, is just gonna be laying down flat colors on their own layer. So here I'll start with the red grip for this spatula, and I'm just gonna use the brush and the eraser tool to carve out a shape. I don't care about lighting at this point, I just want that major shape. I do the same with the head of it. And then if we look at the reference, I have sort of a separate plane within this head. There's a bit of a bevel around the edge and then there's a flat plane on top. And this has a very sharp edge, so I wanna make sure I get this edge really exact. And for me, the way I like to do this is usually with the pen tool. So here I am making on its own layer a shape that is a vector shape with the pen tool. Then once I'm happy with the shape, I can convert it into a rasterized layer, and it'll be easy to work with later. Then the final shape in this image is the soft cast shadow. Now this, again, it's on its own layer, it's exactly like before. The only difference this time is that it's a soft shape, so I'm going to use a soft brush. Using an airbrush and a soft eraser, I'm going to carve out that shape just like before. And then, at this point, I have all of my shapes. Again, it does not look very rendered, it doesn't look very interesting, but this gives me a nice structure to work inside of. Step two is form. So now I'm gonna take all those shapes that I'm happy with, I'm gonna select all those layers and lock transparent pixels. Now I can go through one layer at a time and paint with big expressive strokes with either a soft brush or a hard brush, whatever I want, and I can render, but I don't have to worry about going outside of the lines. So I start with the head of the spatula, and then move on to the flat top face of the spatula, and then to the grip, and eventually I move to the shadow. So you can see how much of a breeze it is to do this rendering, because I don't have to worry about my edges. First I made the shape, then I locked down the shape, and now I'm just painting in the form information. I'm giving the scene a sense of lighting. But here I realize I forgot the little cutout for where you would hang the spatula on a hook. Well, no problem. So I'll start back to step one, make a new shape. So here I just paint in a flat color. Once I'm happy with the shape, I lock the transparent pixels, and then I can begin adding in form. Of course, as I go through this process, I realize, well, I could have been a little bit better about the shape. So there's a fair amount of refining that I do. Now, if you want to change the shape, you have to unlock the transparent pixels, and then you can use the eraser tool and sharpen it up a bit. And then when you're happy with that again, you lock it down and you can continue working. But eventually you get to a finished rendered form. So here we have the shape done, we have the form done. So we are to step three where we do details. And there's a pretty complicated shape cut into the spoon here. So I'm actually going to think of it as a flat 2D graphic and then I'm going to put it in perspective. So using the pen tool, I start by making the major shape that's going to be cut out of this. And then I'm going to make copies of that transform them around to get them sort of looking the right way, and then I make this a single shape. Once I have the shape, then I can put it in perspective, make sure it kind of looks like the reference, and then just like before, I can lock the transparent pixels and begin painting inside of it. Now I'm going to make a second copy of this shape to do a little bit of a trick here, and I'm going to make this one white, because this is going to be sort of the background seen through the slots in the spoon. And the reason I said it's a trick is because if I convert this layer to be a clipping mask, it means no matter where I move it around to, it can only be displayed on top of the layer below it. So first I defined the holes in the spoon, and then because they have a little bit of thickness, this second layer, the clipping mask, is going to show the white of the table through those holes. This is a little bit abstract, so if you don't understand clipping masks, Definitely follow the link in the bottom of the post, and you'll see just how cool they are. Okay, so with that out of the way, we are finally going to put the details in the rubber grip of the spatula. So I'm going to zoom way in for this, and on its own layer, I'm going to paint one single design element. Because if you look, there's a lot of nice repetition here, so why not take advantage? I paint the one, make some copies, rotate them around, scale them up and down, and then before too long, I have a pretty good-looking grip. So there you have it. We finished the spatula and it didn't take very long. So really this is more of an example of one way that I like to paint. Is it the only way I paint? Absolutely not. 
But if you want to paint this way, you're going to need to understand the fundamental skills. You're going to need to understand painting and erasing in equal measure. You're going to need to understand how to lock transparent pixels. And then if you want to do the thing with the cool spoon cutout, you're going to need to know about clipping masks. So I've put links for all of these techniques in the bottom of the post, and I encourage you to watch the videos. So have fun doing your own studies. I don't care whether they're spatulas or space marines. And as always, thanks for coming to the site. Have fun painting.